Folks, hello and welcome to week eight. Uh, let me start by saying thank you very much to everyone for all the great work over the last seven weeks. Uh, as, as you know, uh, you all have submitted your final uh, project inputs, so I will be taking a look at those early this week. It will be my goal to have all of these returned at least by at least by Thursday. The goal will be Wednesday, but uh, if you don't see it by Wednesday, you will certainly see it by Thursday. And it has been a pleasure for me to go through this with you. I, I hope I've been helpful to you, especially on this project as we, uh, as we, you know, as we started from the beginning with everybody choosing a scenario and uh, working through kind of the key elements of what it would take uh, to put together a quantitatively justified response uh, to some of the uh, questions or mathematical elements, whatever we prefer to call them, that were related to those scenarios. So. Uh, again, I, I've enjoyed going through them with you, I, and I just hope that I've been helpful and offered uh, the right guidance at the right time for you to uh, excel and succeed in that regard. So we're going to finish up the course this week, and it's it's very interesting if you look at the the primary topic for the week, or if you look at the uh, the uh, the title for the week, it's uh, Math for Civic Life, and. As you know, we're in the middle of uh, primary season for the presidential election coming up in November. And so one of the things that we're going to talk about this week is applying mathematical processes for various voting methods. Uh, the other two items here at the top explain how data can support informed decision making and describe the purpose of quantitative reasoning when making informed decisions. I, I think those largely speak to the fact that uh, even though we have submitted our final project uh, papers. Uh, we're going to take some time this this week to reflect on what we've been through. And I, I think that's a, a really good exercise to, again, reinforce how we went from end to end on this and what it takes to go end to end on a, uh, a project like this so that it is that it is quantitatively justified. And I, I think that's a, and I've mentioned this a couple times, that is a really fantastic uh, skill to learn this early in your undergraduate study. And so we'll uh, take some time this week to go through uh, those reflections. And I think that will be very helpful to, to tie this up and uh, send everybody off on a, uh, on a very positive note. In terms of assignments this week, uh, we have uh, the uh, standard Zybook participation activity, no challenge activity this week. Uh, the second A2, the journal uh, project reflection, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna link to that in a minute and uh, just take a look at the rubric to make sure that everybody understands what we're looking for this week to finish that up. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the quiz will uh, relate to what you're doing in Zybooks uh, related, and it's really kind of focused on this idea of voting and voting methods. And uh, again, that uh, gets wrapped up nicely in this idea of math for civic life. And so, again, as we close out the project, let me uh, let's see, let me see if I can link to this. Um, Let's see, maps of life. Uh, there it is right here, uh, guidelines and rubric. I just want to take a quick look at this rubric and make sure everybody understands what it is we're doing this week. So really, there's three questions, and there's no real format to this other than the fact that it's a uh, one or two page uh, Microsoft Word document, uh, and you have all the details on that here. What, what we're going to, or what we're asking you to address, uh, discuss how data influence your decision making. And of course, that's what this course is all about is, you know, after you understand what it is that you are trying to address, can you go find data to address that and find data uh, that can be analyzed with the correct methods to produce results to answer the questions that you are trying to answer? And again, that's really, as far as I'm concerned, that's really the core of all the things that we are learning here in 126. And again, that's, you know, going from a problem statement uh, through our data and through our analysis to make sure that the data and the analysis uh, absolutely and clearly responds to the questions that you are trying to answer. And then the second, uh, explain the value of using credible sources. I, I think that's very self-explanatory. Uh, anytime that you're doing research, uh, you know, it's the old garbage in, garbage out. And so if you, you know, if you're getting information from uh, you know, uncre or incredible, I shouldn't say incredible, not credible sources or, uh, you know, data that is uh, 
not uh, representative of, uh, you know, the problem you're trying to solve, or if it's not, you know, if you're doing some sort of inferential statistics, uh, and it's the, you know, the data that you have is not representative of your sample or not representative of the population, uh, then you're really not going to produce the best quality product in the end. So this idea of, uh, of having credible sources, credible resources is a big deal. And then finally, uh, describe how to apply the skills developed in the project. And so we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, there's some basic mathematical things that we talked about early on in the course. And we really spent a lot of time uh, over the last four weeks or so talking about data and analytical techniques, which is, again, I think it's a, it's a real benefit uh, at, a, at a 100 level mathematics course to go through a project like this. And then, you know, in the, in the sense that you have both mathematical and statistical tools that you are using. And clearly the point being that math and statistics, while they, you know, they share some commonalities in mathematics, uh, they are different techniques. And so uh, as we, you know, and as I continue to harp on this idea of question data and techniques, uh, you know, having, having some fluidity on both mathematical and statistical techniques this early in your uh, academic career is a real benefit to you. So that is uh, something that you'll be addressing here in uh, topic or item three. And then here is your rubric. It, it, really, uh, it really just aligns with the three questions. And then obviously, uh, you know, putting those together in a clear and concise manner. And I think everybody has done, uh, done fairly well in that regard. Very impressed with the quality of the writing and the ability of this group to convey its thoughts in writing. So that, that has not been an issue. But uh, I just wanted to hit these, uh, these three major topics that uh, will be, I, I think it'll offer a nice platform for you to reflect on your, uh, your project. And uh, that will uh, close out the project and the course as a whole. So let's, uh, let's see, let's just go back. What I wanted to do here to close this out is just take a quick look at uh, what's going on in Zybooks and see what's going on there as we uh, kind of relate all of this to really this week voting. And, I, and again, obviously very timely for those of you in New Hampshire uh, who just went through your primary, uh, what it was a two or three weeks ago, this obviously uh, is very close to uh, that event as well. And so let's... Uh, Let's get into Zybooks here just very quickly and uh, just take a quick spin through this just to give you some familiarity as you get going here. So voting, uh, plurality voting is a voting process where each voter casts a vote for one candidate and the candidate with the most votes wins. So plurality voting, uh, as we talk about the presidential election, obviously uh, that's not how, uh, how voting works, at least at that level, but certainly as you're voting uh, in your uh, in your own with your own uh, municipalities and your local voting, typically it's plurality voting that uh, you are most familiar with. And so there's some discussion here on that. And then rank choice, uh, rank choice is a really uh, if you've not heard of rank choice voting before, it's kind of a it's kind of a multiple step process uh, that's explained very nicely here. And uh, it, uh, again, it's a nice twist between plurality and uh, some other methods here that uh, we'll talk about in a second. But I think a nice overview here of ranked choice and then some nice examples in section 8.2 to go along with that. Uh, fair division is the process of dividing an object or a collection of objects equally between several people. And you'll get uh, some understanding here of how that applies in this context. Uh, and again, uh, just another uh, a voting method. Certainly, uh, you know, again, you might see it at your municipality or your county or state level, but you uh, do not see it in the Electoral College, which I believe is our last, yes, our last uh, element here in Zybooks. And of course, the Electoral College is what we use to elect uh, our president. And so uh, as we, uh, obviously, the, you know, we're going through the primaries now, which is more of a plurality type approach, but uh, when it comes uh, or becomes November, I believe it's the fifth, uh, where we'll uh, cast our ballots for the next president of the United States. 
uh, this will be uh, decided or the president will be uh, chosen based on the Electoral College. And that really goes back uh, to, or it takes a look at uh, the populations of each of the states and the, the uh, number of uh, what comes down to delegates that uh, are, uh, that come from each state. And then that uh, really kind of translates to this number of electoral votes that a candidate may receive. So, uh, you know, states like California and Texas and Florida and New York with larger populations have greater delegates and with greater delegates comes greater electoral votes. So uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with that, it's certainly uh, a nice, nice timing as we, uh, you know, as we head, head towards November. And so that, uh, that wraps it up. And again, uh, you know, a very timely conclusion of the course uh, for, for this group. So let me say one more time uh, that again, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity I've had to spend the last eight or eight weeks with everyone. Uh, I've enjoyed all of our conversations. And uh, as I've said a couple times, I appreciate all the good work. Everybody uh, has done very good work. And, and again, I hope that, uh, I hope you take something from the course and, uh, you know, especially as it relates to the project, uh, I hope I was uh, able to offer you some, the, the right, again, the right guidance at the right time uh, to help you move that along. <clears throat> and again, I will uh, make sure that all of those are graded at least by Thursday this week. And certainly if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a note. So take care, all the best and have a super week.